Hey guys, today we're going to take a, a brief history of MRP, MRP2 and ERP. So look, we're going to start our journey uh, in the 1940s. So in the 1940s, with the gear up and, and running of World War II, uh, mass production, obviously, particularly of armaments, became a big issue in aircraft. Uh, and big companies were using bills of material uh, in, in kind of earnest for the first time. Uh, and some companies were starting to computerise their, their bills of material, with obviously large mainframe type computers. Moving into the 1950s, well, that had caught on with a couple of companies. So we have like General Electric and Rolls-Royce, for example, who really did computerise their inventory tracking and their bills of material. Uh, so they knew exactly what they had to buy in and what they had to make. Uh, what they didn't do with that is commercialise it. So when we're looking at the life story of ERP, MRP uh, and MRP2, we would come then to 1964 where there was a chap called Joseph Orlicky in the States. Uh, now he's an interesting character, he worked for IBM and he was looking at what they were doing in Japan. Post-war Japan was booming uh, and particularly with the, the Toyota Motor Company uh, were implementing the, the TPM or the Toyota manufacturing method uh, and the, the guys in the West were having a look at that and wondering how they were doing so well. Well, Orlicky put that together in some ways with what GE and Rolls-Royce had been doing in the 1950s and he came up really with the initial concepts of MRP, so a computerised system uh, that was going to look at what material you needed, what you needed to make and when you needed to do it. Uh, and that he then put into his 19, uh, 1975 book, uh, which was called, funny enough, Material Requirements Planning or MRP. And MRP, as we know, it was then starting to take off, sold by IBM and used in companies such as Black & Decker and things uh, around Europe and um, the States. Uh, that takes us pretty much up to 1981. We're in 1981. Someone who's kind of famous in MRP circles, sorry for being a bit nerdy on this, Oliver White, Oliver White and his company uh, produced their book on manufacturing resource planning. That was given its second edition in 1984. Uh, which is what most people know it from. And that really laid the framework for what we call MRP2. Now the difference between MRP and MRP2 is simply this. MRP is focused on what you need to make and what you need to buy, and when you need to do it, and how much of it you need, those kind of three questions. MRP2 takes all of that and simply adds in capacity restraints. So MRP2 is then looking at things like, well, how much capacity do you have on your resources, uh, how loaded are those resources, uh, and whether or not you're over or under capacity. And all of that is taken into account during the MRP uh, algorithm, for, during its processing, uh, and then it throws out answers based on, well, this is what you need to buy, this is what you need to make, this is when you can and can't do it based on your capacity and the lead times of your materials and things. I, I think that's, that's our journey for MRP. Following on from that, most of you will have heard of ERP, to briefly cover what that is, well that's Enterprise Resource Planning. It's really taking the same concepts from MRP2, but adding a load of tools around that as well for your organisation. So, you know, things like adding in sales tools, marketing tools, uh, accounts tools, things like that, to be a more complete enterprise-wide system. So look, that's it for today, a brief history uh, of MRP. Hopefully that's useful for you guys, and we'll catch you soon. To learn more, visit our website or book to attend one of our free educational events. You'll even receive a free paperback copy of our book, How to Implement a Manufacturing System, just for attending.